Hey there, ever wondered about the quirkiest, funniest, and most heartwarming moments that could unfold in a single movie? Well, get ready for a ride with the 1977 classic Annie Hall. The film is packed with laughs, shocks, and a touch of sadness that'll keep you glued to the screen. Remember the first time you watched it? Maybe it was a cozy night in or a spontaneous movie night with friends. And who can forget the classic Hollywood actor stealing the show? Who was your favorite among the stellar cast? This romantic comedy introduces us to the complexities of relationships with a delightful blend of humor and reality. No need for overly artistic language, here just a straightforward exploration of love, laughter, and the unexpected. As you watch, be prepared for some surprising twists and turns that will make you question laugh and perhaps shed a tear. But that's the magic of the film, capturing life's moments in all their messy, beautiful glory. Now, we want to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to the movie? Share your stories and reflections in the comments below. We can't wait to read them. So, if you're up for a journey filled with humor, shockers, and a touch of sadness, keep watching. You won't be disappointed. Annie Hall, the 1977 film directed by Woody Allen, left an enduring mark on both the cinematic landscape and popular culture. The movie, a romantic comedy exploring the complexities of relationships, was met with widespread acclaim during its time. Diane Keaton, who portrayed the titular character, captivated audiences with a unique fashion sense and charismatic presence. Her quirks and individuality resonated with viewers, making her an iconic figure. The impact of the film extended beyond the silver screen, influencing fashion trends with Annie's signature menswear-inspired style. The witty and intellectual dialogue, often breaking the fourth wall, brought a fresh and unconventional approach to storytelling. Allen's narrative techniques and innovative use of humor left a lasting impression on the cinematic landscape. In the aftermath of its success, various spin-offs emerged, attempting to capture the charm and appeal of the original. However, none could replicate the magic of the first film. Merchandise featuring iconic quotes and images flooded the market, showcasing the enduring popularity of Annie Hall's character. The cultural impact also paved the way for adaptations and references in subsequent films and TV shows. The exploration of love and neuroses in the movie became a touchstone for filmmakers and writers seeking to delve into the intricacies of human relationships. The influence can be traced through the years as it remains a source of inspiration for artists across different mediums. In conclusion, the reception during its time and the enduring impact on popular culture highlight the significance of the film in the realm of cinema. The character's unique charm, the movie's unconventional storytelling, and its influence on fashion and subsequent adaptations solidify its place in the annals of cinematic history. Annie Hall, a film released in 1977, remains a cinematic gem with memorable moments that have stood the test of time. One standout scene showcases the unconventional relationship between Alvy Singer and Annie. The split-screen therapy session exemplifies the complexity of their connection. As Alvy and Annie express their inner thoughts, the audience gains insight into the dynamics of their relationship, providing a humorous yet poignant glimpse into the challenges of love. Another remarkable moment occurs during a family dinner where Alvy, unable to escape his neurotic tendencies, imagines everyone around him engaging in a heated philosophical debate. This surreal and comical sequence captures Alan's unique ability to blend humor with introspection. The use of animation to visualize Alvy's internal thoughts adds a layer of creativity to the storytelling, making it a memorable and innovative scene in the film. The iconic lobster scene is a testament to Annie Hall's ability to mix humor with genuine emotion. Alvy takes Annie to a lobster dinner, attempting to introduce her to a culinary delight. However, the situation takes a hilarious turn when Annie expresses her discomfort with the idea of consuming a creature that's still alive. This scene encapsulates the film's exploration of the quirks and idiosyncrasies that make relationships both challenging and endearing. Lastly, the poignant scene at the end of the film, where Alvy reflects on his past with Annie, leaves a lasting impression. The use of voiceover and the melancholic tone underscore the bittersweet nature of their relationship. It's a moment that resonates with audiences as Alvy grapples with the complexities of love and the inevitability of change. In conclusion, Annie Hall's enduring appeal lies in its ability to capture the intricacies of relationships with humor, creativity, and authenticity. 
The film's memorable moments, from the split-screen therapy session to the lobster dinner, contribute to its status as a timeless classic in the world of cinema. The average shot length in the movie is 14.5 seconds, contributing to its pacing and visual style. A memorable line, hey, don't knock masturbation, it's sex with someone I love, earned the 78th spot on Premiere's The 100 Greatest Movie Lines in 2007. In classroom flashbacks, a subtle detail emerges as one of the teachers writes Tuesday, December 1 on the chalkboard, aligning with Woody Allen's birthday and his seventh birthday in 1942, coinciding with the school setting. These elements add layers to the narrative, intertwining personal history and storytelling techniques. In the film, Alvy and Rob share a unique on-screen dynamic derived from their real-life friendship. Referring to each other as Max mirrors their personal habit, originating in Alan's request for anonymity in public. This nickname exchange, born out of caution, reflects a genuine aspect of their early careers. The house in Coney Island, Brooklyn, under the Thunderbolt roller coaster, serves as Alvy's childhood home. Originally the Kensington Hotel, its demolition in 2000 erased this piece of cinematic history. Alan stumbled upon this location during filming, adding a layer of authenticity to Alvy's upbringing. A spontaneous moment unfolds when Alvy sneezes into cocaine, an unscripted accident that struck a chord with the audience during previews. Director Alan opted to keep this unplanned scene, even compensating for laughter-induced misses with additional footage. This incident showcases the film's humor and the director's willingness to embrace unexpected moments. These anecdotes, woven into the narrative, provide insights into the film's creation and its subtle nods to real-life events. The use of personal history and unplanned elements adds depth to Annie Hall, making it a unique cinematic experience. Woody Allen and Diane Keaton shared an authentic camaraderie during the making of the film. The lobster dinner scene, the first shot for the movie, captures their uncontrollable laughter, requiring minimal acting. This genuine interaction set the tone for their on-screen dynamic. Notable appearances by Sigourney Weaver and Jeff Goldblum might seem like cameos, but they marked significant points in their careers. At the time, Goldblum was relatively unknown, with Weaver making her film debut. Both actors would later rise to fame, with Weaver securing the lead in Alien two years after her role in the film. In a blink and miss it moment, Danny Elfman appears at the L, a house party, subtly blending into the background as he walks past Alvy. These behind the scenes anecdotes shed light on the film's organic moments and the early careers of its cast, contributing to the unique charm of Annie Hall. Woody Allen, in collaboration with Marshall Brickman, crafted the screenplay for the film by strolling through the streets of New York City, specifically between Lexington and Madison Avenues. This unique approach to script development adds a distinctive touch to the film's creation, showcasing the dynamic process behind its conception. Deane Keaton's acclaimed performance in Looking for Mr. Goodbar in the same year has long sparked speculation about its impact on her Best Actress Oscar for her role in the movie. The contrasting nature of the two films with the gritty content of the former possibly influencing Academy voters resulted in Keaton securing the award for her part in this film. Jeff Goldblum makes an early appearance in the movie as a forgetful party guest who humorously forgot his mantra, contributing to the film's ensemble cast. These subtle elements in the narrative highlight the organic and spontaneous nature of the movie, providing glimpses into its character dynamics. The collaborative street walking screenplay process, Diane Keaton's contrasting roles, and Jeff Goldblum's memorable early appearance all add layers to the narrative, underscoring the film's unique creation and the intriguing dynamics within. The making of Woody Allen's acclaimed film involved intriguing behind-the-scenes moments. At Coney Island, Allen left a crew of 200 extras waiting all morning without shooting, showcasing the unpredictable nature of his creative process. The initial cut of the film ran two hours and 20 minutes, featuring scenes later discarded, such as Alvy's former classmates in the present day, Teenage Alvy, a junk food restaurant scene with Danny Allo, and an extensive fantasy segment at Madison Square Garden. Christopher Walken's driving scene was initially cut, but later restored a week before completion. New material for the ending was filmed on three occasions, with the final montage being a late addition. The first cut took six weeks to assemble, and Woody Allen and Marshall Brickman were dissatisfied with the initial result. 
Ralph Rosenblum, and Susan E. Morse were tasked with condensing 100,000 feet of footage into a 93-minute running time. Despite challenges, the filmmakers recognized the strengths and weaknesses of their concept, with Brickman deeming the first 25 minutes a disaster. These candid insights into the film's production highlight the dynamic and evolving nature of the creative process behind Annie Hall, providing a glimpse into the challenges and decision-making that shaped the final product. Woody Allen's film, often considered among his finest works, may not align with his own expectations. Despite its acclaim, Allen himself holds reservations about its realization, recognizing a gap between his vision and the final product. In a memorable scene, Alvy, played by Allen, amusingly claims to be surrounded by the Godfather cast while waiting for Annie at a theater. Ironically, one of the actors in that fictional cast, Rick Petricelli, was an uncredited extra in the actual film. Alvy's attempt to escape this fictional cast parallels his pursuit of Annie, portrayed by D.N. Keaton, an actress who was part of the Godfather cast. Woody Allen proposed Louis Buñuel play himself in the film, offering $30,000 for two days of work. Buñuel declined due to scheduling conflicts, adding an interesting what-if aspect to the film's casting dynamics. Despite its cinematic success, Woody Allen's assessment of the film underscores the gap between artistic intent and realization, offering a nuanced perspective on the acclaimed work. The amusing intertwining of real and fictional elements within the narrative adds layers to the movie's charm and complexity. These behind-the-scenes insights provide a glimpse into the creative process, contributing to the intriguing dynamics within.